Hi everyone, Luke here from Weekend Tour Pros, and today we're gonna to do another ball review on the channel. Now, I haven't done one of these for about a year and it went down really well when I did it, so I'm really keen to do a few more of them on the channel for you this year. And today's review is gonna be comparing the premium soft balls from each of the manufacturers, or the four main manufacturers that you see on tour. So the four balls we'll be putting to the test today are the Titleist Pro V1, which is a three-piece urethane ball, the Callaway Chrome Soft, which is also a three-piece urethane ball, the Shrixen Z Star, again, a three-piece urethane ball, and finally, the TaylorMade TP5, which is a five-piece urethane ball. Now, all of these balls retail between 40 pounds and 48 pounds, depending on which one of the ones you go for. And the reason I want to do this test is because I really want to play a premium ball. I'm someone that wants to make sure I'm getting the absolute most out of my golf game. I like spending my money on golf. The problem is I don't really know which one is the right one for me as an average swing speed player because when I read the marketing blurb of these four golf balls, it almost reads identical. And when you go on the websites of these manufacturers, they show you the comparison between each of their own balls. So Titleist will show you a comparison between the Pro V1, Pro V1X, Left Dash, AVX, etc. But you don't know how to compare that to Callaway Chrome Soft, who are only showing comparisons between the Chrome Soft, the Chrome Soft X, etc. So what I want to do today is put them all through their paces, one after the other, me striking it similar on the day, and see which one comes out best. And I'm hoping if you're watching this down the lens and you're also like me, an average swing speed player wanting to play a premium ball and you're not sure if you're using the right one, hopefully this will give you some information to help you too. Let's set up the test, I'll tell you how we're gonna do it and we'll get stuck in. Okay, so just before I start hitting the shots, I just wanna show you how I'm gonna do this test. So first of all, because we're in an indoor Trackman bay, we've also added the little dots to the ball just to help with those spin readings. So you do pick up the spin readings from Trackman indoor, but having the dots on just helps with it. So that'll help us get as much accurate data as possible. We're then gonna conduct four tests. We're gonna start by hitting a roughly 10 yard chip shot using a 60 degree lob wedge. I'm then gonna hit full pitching wedge shots then seven irons and then drivers. Now the way I'm gonna do the test is I'm gonna hit all four of the balls for the 10 yard chip shot first. I'll then show you the data so we can see it on screen. I'll then move up to hitting all four balls for the pitching wedge. And again, I'll show you the data and we'll then repeat that for the seven and the iron and the driver. Now, I think that's the best way to do it because it allows me to kind of be consistent and get a feel for the same shot and hopefully be able to replicate my swing as best as I possibly can as a handicapped golfer to show you. Now, the objective for me here is I'm in this bay for up to two hours doing this. So the objective for me is to try and show you two hours of shots in the next five or 10 minutes and then some data in between for a couple of minutes as well. So hopefully it will give you a real comprehensive picture of what is a really big comprehensive test. Right, what I'm gonna do now is start with the Pro V1, get myself set up and we'll get going. Right, so let's take a look at that data from those four 10 yard chip shots, and then we'll move on to the pitching wedge. Okay, so we'll just start with those 10 yard chip shots with the 60 degree wedge. And one thing I would say here is I think with a 10 yard chip shot, my strike is ultimately influencing these numbers more than the balls itself, particularly as a handicapped golfer. So I'm not gonna dwell on these numbers too much. I think with a 10 yard chip shot, it's really more important how the ball sounds and how it feels to you. Now for me personally, I like a soft feeling golf ball and the Chrome Soft definitely felt the softest off the face. And linked to that, it was also, it was also the dullest sounding. The Strix and Z Star, the Titleist Pro V1, and the TaylorMade TP5 all sounded and all felt really, really comparable to me. If I did have to pick one out as sounding or feeling a little bit different, it would be the TaylorMade TP5 that sounded just a little bit clippier and a little bit louder 
than the other two balls. But I think that was because we were in an enclosed studio space. And I think if you took me out on the grass and replicated that test, I'd struggle to notice a difference with all the natural surroundings around me. In terms of the numbers, you can have a little look at them for yourself on screen now. But like I say, I wouldn't dwell too much on these because my strike is overriding them significantly. Now let's get into the pitching wedge numbers where there's a lot more interesting data to see. Right, let's look at the data from all of those pitching wedges before we move on to that seven iron. Okay, so let's just look at these pitching wedge numbers now. And I think this is where it starts to get a little bit interesting because the balls start to separate themselves a little bit here. Now, what we've got here is we've got two extremes to achieve the same outcome. We've got the Chrome Soft at one end of the scale and we've got the TP5 at the other end of the scale. And let me just explain that to you. If we look at the Chrome Soft data here, you can see that it was the highest launching at 25.5. It was the lowest spinning at 6,465. It had the highest peak heights at 66 feet, and it had the steepest land angles at 45.6. So what that says to me is that the Chrome Soft was launching highest and coming in steepest into the ball, and it actually achieved some really strong carry distance by doing that. However, you, the control that you lost from that reduced spin was gained from those extra heights and those extra steepnesses. The TP5, on the other hand, did it the other way around. You'll see here that the launch angle of 23.5 was the joint lowest. The spin at 7,400 was the highest, and it was 1,000 revs more than that Chrome Soft. The peak height was almost the lowest at 58 feet, and the land angle was almost the lowest at 43 feet as well. So what you can see here is this ball was achieving it by spin being the way to demonstrate control rather than necessarily the launch and the peak heights and the land angles. So depending on the type of golfer you are, you might find one of these balls more preferable to you at this swing speed range. I think the Pro V1 and the Z Star are then smack bang in the middle. The Pro V1 is slightly more comparable to the TP5 and the Z Star is probably slightly more comparable to the Chrome Soft but actually I could make a case that the Z-Star's smack bang in the middle. Let's show you the data from all of those seven irons and then we can move on to the driver and finish the test. Okay, so let's just look at that seven iron data. And the first thing to say is that the pattern we saw with the spin numbers from the pitching wedge is replicated again with the seven iron. That TP5 is the highest spinning ball at 4,781, while that Chrome Soft is once again about 1,000 revs lower at 3,671. And then you've got the Pro V1 shortly behind the TP5 and that Z Star smack bang in the middle. So a real consistency there in terms of spin. But in terms of some of the other numbers, we start to see a little bit of a difference here in the TP5. Unlike with the pitching wedge where it was lower launching and lower land angles into the green, here it becomes the top of all of those things. It's got the highest launch, it's got the highest spin, the highest peak height, and it's got the steepest land angles into the green. The problem is because it had all of those things, it then sacrificed distance and it's the shortest ball in this test at the seven iron distance at only 140.3 yards, which compared to the Strix and Z style, which is the longest, we're nearly giving up nine yards. That's almost a club for most golfers. And I don't know if that's something I personally would wanna be giving up when I'm always looking to add a bit of distance without sacrificing too much control. 
And for me, that's why I think the Z-Star probably wins the 7-iron test, because I think it gave me the best of both worlds. But also, I think the Pro V1 could be comparable to that as well. They're both really, really similar. I think just because I was probably striking it a little bit better and a little bit faster with the Z-Star, we saw some slightly better carry numbers. And that's probably what I'm just picking the Z-Star just in favor of. In terms of the Chrome Soft, as much as I love how it feels, I would be a little bit worried about the fact that it's not going as high. It's not launching potentially as much as some of the other balls and with that lower spin and with that low land angle, as much as it might be giving me some really good distance, I'd be worried about my ability to stop this ball as much as the others. And therefore I probably wouldn't be favoring the, Pro v, uh, the Chrome Soft in this part of the test. Now, just look at these driver numbers. Again, I think this is gonna be dependent on you as the goal for which one you think is the best one for you. Once again, we've seen the TP5 come out as the highest spinning ball. So across the pitching wedge seven iron and driver, the TP5 is the highest spinning ball. And despite the fact that the Chrome Soft was the lowest spinning ball in the pitching wedge and the seven iron, actually the Z Star is the lowest spinning ball with the driver. Now, again, that could be a good thing if you're someone who naturally is generating a bit too much spin with your driver. The Z Star could be a great option, especially given how we've seen it perform really, really well in the seven iron and the pitching wedge. The Pro V1 and the Chrome Soft are really in the middle of that spin profile. And again, it just depends what you're looking for. Because of that high spin, we did see that the TP5 also had the highest peak height and the highest land angle. So what that meant is, although it was the joint longest in terms of carry distance at 195.1, it was the shortest overall in total distance because we weren't getting the benefit of that roll because of how steeply it was coming in. So for me, looking at which one is overall the longest, we can see that it's marginal between the Chrome Soft, the, T the Pro V1, and the Z-Star, and I think you could say that all of them are really, really similar in length. Interestingly, the Z-Star was the shortest through the air. I think that was a mixture, as you can see, that my club head speed was starting to drop off as I got really tired, but also the fact that that low spin, I was probably struggling to keep this ball in the air, and it was probably just a little bit too low spinning for me with the driver at the speeds I was generating towards the end. So overall, with the driver, I think it depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for lots of extra height, and launch with the driver and a bit more spin to keep the ball in the air, that TP5 could be a really good option. If you're looking for something that's a bit of best of both worlds, I think the Chrome Soft and the Pro V1 come in really, really well there. And I think the Z-Star, if I did hit another batch of shots with it where I was maybe hitting it first when I wasn't as tired, I think we'd see that was really comparable to the Chrome Soft with the driver. Okay, so we're done hitting shots now and you've just seen me give you all of the data sets side by side there. A couple of things just to consider before we get to my final thoughts is the price point of these balls. So we have two balls, the Titleist Pro V1 and the Callaway Chrome Soft that are 48 pound a dozen in the UK. And then we've got the TaylorMade TP5 and the Strix and Z-Star that are at that 40 pound price point. So they are eight pound a dozen cheaper. So if price is one of the factors when you're playing a premium ball that you want to consider, then these two on the right hand side, the TaylorMade and the Strixen are cheaper. The other thing I think it's always worth considering is durability. Now what I would say is we are indoors, we are hitting into a screen that is different to what you'd be doing out on the golf course and it could well be that kind of hitting the screen at speeds does cause a bit of an impact to the durability. But I would say is the Titleist Pro V1 has come out as if it's brand new, still out of the box. And I must admit, because I was using this ball first for each one of the tests, so that each stage I hit it first, I did hit a few shots with it just to warm up before I started using the data sets. So I hit more shots with this ball and it looks like it's straight out of the box. So it definitely gets top marks for me in terms of durability. It's really hard to split the TaylorMade TP5 and that Strixen. So although that Strixen picked up a scuff that I noticed quite early doors, it's not got any worse 
and there's no other marks on it actually and it's really hard to see like I say if you weren't scrutinizing it under these bright lights here I don't think you'd have even noticed it on the ball the tailor made has got a mark it looks a little bit worse but I think that's because it's it's made the ball like look a little bit duller than how sort of bright the normal white cover is but again it's really superficial and I don't think it would have stopped you from using the ball and I don't even think you'd notice it out on the golf course so really hard to split them probably in joint second and I feel bad putting the Callaway Chrome Soft into third because again, I'm splitting hairs between all of these, but it has picked up one little sort of mark here, which is like almost like a little scratch mark on one of the dimples on both sides. Um, and again, although it's really, really minor, it probably is the harshest of the scuff marks that I've noticed. But again, how much of that is caused by the fact we're in an indoor setting and we're hitting into a screen and you might not notice that on the golf course, but definitely something to consider if you're also paying for a premium ball you, and you want durability so they last, that is just something for you to consider. Right, let's get home and let's give you my concluding thoughts. Okay, so we're coming towards the end of the video now and I just wanna give you my concluding thoughts. Now, the first thing I wanna say is that all four of these golf balls are absolutely fantastic. They are premium golf balls for a reason and they are played by the top professional players in the world for a reason. So if you pick any of these golf balls, I'm sure you're gonna have a premium golf ball experience as well. But what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to nitpick and find patterns in the data to help the different golfers watching down the lens work out which of these golf balls is the right one for them. Not necessarily the best golf ball, but the right one for them. And I think we've been able to prove that. So if we start with that tailor-made TP5, if you're a golfer that generates very low spin and struggles to get high spin, and you're finding that your trajectory is quite low, then hopefully the tailor-made TP5 could be a great option for you to test. That spin that we saw throughout the whole bag might help you to hold a few more greens by giving you a little bit more control and hopefully not sacrificing too much distance. At the other end of the bag, we've got the Callaway Chrome Soft. If you're the golfer that generates too much spin, and actually that's at the detriment of distance, then the Chrome Soft being a lower spinning golf ball might help you to get a little bit of extra distance without sacrificing too much control. Then we've got in the middle, the Strix and Z-Star, which is much closer towards the Chrome Soft end of the scale. But if you're worried about that Chrome Soft being a little bit too low spin, then I think you'd pick the Z-Star. And you've got the Titleist Pro V1, which is much closer to the TP5 end of the scale. But if you're worried about that TP5 being a little bit too high spin, then you would pick the Pro V1. I also think that throughout the test, the Pro V1 just proved itself to be a really consistent golf ball. And that's no wonder why it's got its reputation as the number one ball in golf. If we then overlay that price point against those two sets of balls, you might be able to save yourself eight pound a dozen by picking the Z-Star over the Callaway Chrome Soft if you're picking between those two. And the same again, you might save eight pound a dozen by picking the tailor-made TP5 versus the Pro V1. But it is worth noting that that Pro V1 was top in the durability test. So provided you don't lose the golf ball, you might find that you're able to use it for longer and that might offset the price differential between that and the TP5. The final thing to overlay is the sound and the feel. I definitely found that the Chrome Soft felt the softest and it sounded the dullest. Now I couldn't pick between the other three balls. I think they were all really, really comparable, but if that is something that's important for you, it is just worth taking into consideration. So that brings me towards the end of the video now. And all that remains for me to say is if you like the video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up. It really does help me and it helps YouTube to promote my videos to more golfers like yourself that might find this interesting. And if you do like my content as an average golfer and find me relatable, then please do consider subscribing to my channel. I am gonna try and replicate this test using the harder X version of these balls in the next couple of weeks. So if you wanna be notified of that, hitting that subscribe button will make sure you see that video as soon as it lands on the channel as well. Otherwise, all that remains for me to say is thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great day, keep enjoying your golf and keep on that quest to become a weekend tour pro. Thanks very much, goodbye.